I wanted to bring in the right brains to talk about what artificial intelligence really means. What's the gateway to get started with artificial intelligence um, as an engineering organization? And the data over to people who can operate on AI. That seems to be a significant barrier. Somebody has better access to build AI systems rather than thinking that, you know, oh, it can optimize itself to do 60 to 70% of the work that a human brain mm -hmm. can do. Correct. That's the sort of education we try and do with the customers so they understand the uh, ecosystem properly. And Hello, friends. I hope some of you know me, but uh, just for the sake of introduction, my name is Vasudevan Swaminathan, in short Vasu, and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Shuchi Systems. Um, I've been writing about a lot of things on LinkedIn, but more recently, I've started this series called Nothing Artificial About It. And ever since I started it, um, and people have started reading about it, I've been getting questions in my inbox as well as general comments saying, Really, if you're doing so much of AI, can you guide us in terms of how do you get started with AI? What's the place to get started? Where do we get started? What's the right thing to do when setting up an AI implementation and things like that? To be very honest, I'm a storyteller. I know AI. I've experienced it to some extent because of the five years of work that you have done in Shuchi on the AI front as well as um, with our experience in creating this platform, this artificial intelligence platform called Intix.ai. But I thought I should bring in the right guys from my side in order to talk more about it. And the more questions I got, I felt the need for doing a video like this where I wanted to bring in the right brains to talk about what artificial intelligence really means. How do you get started? Can someone just like that jump into artificial intelligence? Uh, should there be a big bang approach or is there, a step, is there a stepwise approach and things like that? So today I have with me two people who have been enlightening me, teaching me about artificial intelligence for a number of years now. Let me get started with Janardhan and Purnavel, our principal architect at Shuchi Systems and the brain behind Intix.ai, our artificial intelligence platform. Um, Jana carries close to 20 plus years experience in different parts of engineering, software engineering, starting with being a developer and then becoming a data architect to an enterprise data architect, uh, spending time in setting up infrastructure and then has moved into machine learning, uh, data sciences, DevOps, infrastructure and things like that for the past five years or so. Jana's experience, Jana's knowledge, his expertise has been very, very critical for us in building a products and solutions. And most of our clients look up to Jana for their architectural solutions and things like that. So today we'll talk more with Jana in terms of what artificial intelligence means and uh, you know the things that he has done and how he has done some successful implementations for larger clients as well as medium and small clients for us. The other person I have on my right hand side is Dinesh Janakiraman. Uh, shortly called or fondly called as DJ. Um, DJ is our product manager for Intix.ai, our artificial intelligence platform. And DJ brings in a fantastic blend of techno commercial abilities to the table. So our clients who have uh, implemented the Intix.ai, which is an uh, agnostic platform that helps in intelligent document processing and uh, things like that, uses a lot of machine learning and AI underneath. So Dinesh has been at the top of, uh, you know, uh, Intix.ai in terms of taking it to clients, uh, do the implementation, professional services support and things like that. And uh, the, the reason I wanted DJ to be on this call is because DJ brings in a fabulous, uh, you know, knowledge in terms of explaining clients the business need for using artificial intelligence and allied areas like machine learning, the choice of an algorithm, the, the, the needs surrounding building an artificial intelligence system and things like that. I believe uh, the collaboration between uh, DJ and Jenna today and uh, the answers that we get from them will be very, very useful to our viewers. And I hope you really enjoy it. And I, I really hope it enlightens you. With that being said, um, you know, let's get into the questions. Thank you. Jenna, I'll start with you. Uh, firstly, thanks for taking the time amidst all your uh, artificial intelligence uh, <laughs> work that you're doing, actually. So this was very randomly. I, I pulled you in very randomly, but I wanted to make the best use of your time. Let me start off with this simple question. Um, you made a transition from enterprise data architecture towards data sciences, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and things like that. 
I want you to tell our viewers as to what's the gateway to get started with artificial intelligence um, as an engineering organization. Because a lot of people think that you, you suddenly wake up one morning to find yourself getting started with artificial intelligence because uh, the things that are going in social today, whether it is um, Google's Gemini or uh, you talk about um, uh, Astral.ai, which Microsoft has, uh, Mistral.ai, Mistral. yes, yeah, Mistral, I'm sorry. So Mistral, which Microsoft has collaborated with, and then OpenAI's collaboration with Microsoft, all that has somehow made people think that artificial intelligence is something that you can do overnight or at least people like me you know think that you know wow you know i wake up some morning and find that you know artificial intelligence is take is going to take over everything but i know having worked with you and people like dj i know that that's not the case so can you enlighten our viewers in terms of what's the right way to transition to artificial intelligence when should an organization look at moving towards artificial intelligence and why should they do so thank you so it's a question to ponder for probably five ten minutes Pastor, but i'll do my best to answer Probably uh, DJ can also pitch in. Some of one of the reasons why we seem to have received this level of intensity in terms of conversations, be it between people who focus on engineering, be it between people who are between two different departments, engineering and business, or be it between two business folks. One of the reasons why the conversation has become really intense is one of the things that you pointed out: the barrier to entry to even have conversations seems to have been suddenly pulled, yanked off the last one, one and a half years. Mm. We have been talking about this as an organization, but it was, if you remember, there were two broader verticals that we wanted to focus on. One was that one was uh, the vision to see what blockchain can do. The other one wants to do with the machine learning. We have constantly been having discussions, mm. but suddenly, sometime between sometime between 2019-ish, 20-ish, uh, for a things started going on a very different hockey stick curve, if I have to put it that way. There seems to be a clear, you know, uh, signal mm. from people like OpenAI that has told that the, 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 the world seems to have uh, you know, gotten, which is the barrier to entry to talk about what can I do with the AI. Mm seems to have been pulled off, which means that I can use uh, uh, for myself chat GPT to write an essay. So there is a clear usage there. And is chat GPT really good at writing essays? It is definitely, there is no second thought about it. Mm. So if people want to hand over the business of writing emails and confirming emails and if they have got issues and uh, finding out whether they are really good at doing that, go to chat GPT. There is nothing wrong with that. I would always recommend that, but please be careful about <laughs> putting attachments out there. Mm. That is that is answer number one. But when we have to get serious about what businesses can do, based on our experience, there are two answers that I can give. If you're talking about large enterprises, you know, one of the enterprises that come to my mind is the, this large um, prior authorization automation firm right. that we are uh, talking about. I would call them as you now sort of an enterprise uh, uh, situation. The other one is what this, um, I, I, um, the obesity management, oh, right? Yeah, uh, the specialty upstart, healthcare. The, the specialty provided, health, I'm sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Mm. The specialty healthcare app that uh, one of our customers are building uh, mm. from Valley. If you have to take th those two examples, both of them definitely have barrier to entry. Mm. And the first, the, the first and foremost thing that I have seen that is important for them is not about understanding what EA can do. Mm. It is about having access to data. Mm data that you can access as a business but also having the ability to hand the data over to people who can operate on AI. That seems to be a significant barrier. Being able to not only have access to clean data at, at, at scale. Now, I mean, data is a very uh, cliched word and probably we have to spend some more Correct. time to understand what kind of data that we need to talk about. Having access to data but being able to hand over the data to somebody who can operate on AI mm. seems to be a very important I see as a barrier to entry. That, that is something that uh, I wanted to you know, answer as uh, one part. Um, the other part is it is just not about AI alone. There, there is an infrastructure that you need to put in place to consume this. Now, that is not AI. AI can only do certain things. If ChatGPT can answer to you, 
please understand that there are million other requests that are going to chat gpt at the same point in time all those requests need to be answered and i we do have situations where it stops because you know there seems to be a scale function uh, problem there so answer number 1 access to data answer number 2 there is still engineering that needs to be done to ensure that you get to have access to these magic uh, 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 that that has come out in the last two or three years that is how i would summarize my answer was uh, if i were to probably put it in a slightly uh, what do you call uh, a summarized form what you're saying is getting started with a means that you already have something in store it's like starting off in the kitchen with your preparatory or your basic set of items and data is one such one thing one such thing right and the, uh, the 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 volume of data the quality of data the infrastructure that you have to process the data if you have been doing all of this for some time in the form of either a data warehouse or a database or something like that somebody has better access to build ai systems rather than thinking that you know oh i don't have anything but i want to get i mean get started with ai the other thing was so i think i kind of shared it with you the other thing is the organizations need to understand that they have to have access to compute mm. scaling or power G- power the, of computing very simple terms you have to understand that you have to spend your hard earned money to uh, you know get nvidia stocks going up <laughs> <laughs> so you have to have access to gpu you have to right. you have to right. boil it down all the way to the barest minimum you have to understand that you have to spend money to write right. thank you jana vijay i'll just expand a little bit on this question to you because you often meet with our customers or prospects uh, where they come with uh, you know they want to start with intix again yeah. but they think that it will create the data it will do everything for you mm-hmm. actually when it comes to implementation and we have to tell them that your contextualization really matters as to where you want to put it in so how do you approach this data problem from a business sense with clients see uh, the ai has been around for quite some time uh, right uh, but the when the transition happened from the teslas mm. to open ai everybody started understanding because it, then it became the citizen problem mm. right i'm able to do so much with ai so everybody started talking about ai uh, first of all all right the factual truth per se is that a is not replacing human brain it just can't right, right? it can optimize itself to do 60 to 70% of the work that a human brain mm, can do correct. but the rest 30% have to be done by the human uh, right that's that's very critical for uh, somebody to understand so a is not going to replace 100% of the human brain mm. it is not going to replace 100% of the human source mm. uh, right the second thing is the organization have to decide saying that where ai could be used by understanding what could be perceived by a system what could a perceive uh, a system can understand from the perceivers and start making decisions mm. those are the places where ai can uh, come into play so when it comes to document uh, uh, processing yes there were ocs that were available in the earlier stages but the advancement of uh, ai gave us the opportunity where irrespective of wherever the data is in whatever structure it was in it has the capability to right. extract and uh, give the uh, right. information right again can it replace human no it can only help you doing the 60% of the work uh, that is otherwise been looked at typed at and things like right. that but it also right. has the inert capability to also give information saying that you know where i pull the data from mm. and what is the confidence of the extraction and so on and so right. forth right those helps human to fasten the process right. they cut down the processing time by 30 to 40% right. based on the right. uh, uh, document so what we try and do whenever we meet a, meet a prospect is a try and explain uh, to an extent right i mean it is not going to do, do magic here it Correct. is finally algorithms that are in work uh, it is actually you know uh, probabilities and statistics that are right. taking place to do the work of uh, extraction of uh, information right. Uh, right so you need to understand that basis first of all saying that once you throw the document it is not going to do the entire uh-huh. thing and uh, uh, you know give you the final result and uh, you just don't have to do anything just sit across right. and right. just watch right. the computer screen 
so that education becomes very very critical uh, to the customer on what it is and most people just don't do that right i mean typical yeah. uh, happens yeah, like when you put the document it is going to extract the information okay. then when they say hey this is not coming then they start addressing the problem whereas we take upon the responsibility of making the customer first understand wonderful what is that it is going to do and what it can't do mm-hmm. and where uh, you know you need to put a line to differentiate between you know what is possible and what is not going to be possible and that's where uh, you know jana came out with this beautiful thing of make a checker paradigm okay. right uh, treat, treat this as a maker anything that makes does not mean there is a checker that is needed right. right now make a checker has been around for eternity uh, right, right now that True. continues in a also True. that's the sort of education we try and do with the customer True. so they understand the uh, ecosystem properly and make informed decision rather than uh, you know assuming something and finally getting themselves cheated around fantastic fantastic thanks dj thanks